Hi there, I'm Black Bright, just got in from work and welcome to my channel. If you're just passing through for the first time, like, subscribe and share. And for those of you of my existing subscribers, thank you for supporting my channel. Um, as you know, I tend to talk about anything that's unjust, unfair, and I try to clarify things to make things understandable for you. Um, so today, um, the inspiration behind this video is because I noticed that, I don't know how many of you watch First Dates, but you know the French guy who has everybody coming into his Michelin restaurant. Well, apparently he tried to get his settled status and he was waiting. I don't know how long he was waiting, but he was so frustrated. He tweeted about it. I think he sent out um, a tweet and got 101,000 tweets back in response. And it reached Pretty Patel. I don't know if he copied her into the tweet or what. But anyway, within 12 hours, he got settled status. And, you know, he was saying, he was even saying that, you know, how come I got it so quickly? I mean, you know, that shouldn't really be the case. If you can turn it around that quickly for me, you can turn it around that quickly for everyone. And he's got about 80 people in his restaurant. He said he's going to work to get them so that they don't have the same problems as he was experiencing. The thing is, is that it's unfair that just because you're rich and famous, you end up getting preferential treatment, which is the case. You know, had it been anyone else, they would have been going through the same challenges that the regular EU national is going through right now. The majority, I think 42% of EU nationals are being given pre-settled status instead of settled status, which is what they were promised. They were promised no problem, 3.2 million, you can come over here, you can live and work legally in the UK, no problem. The, the fact of the matter, though, is that it's not that simple. They're coming up with so many challenges. I don't know if it's the fault of the EU national or whether it's the system. You know, sometimes you can press the wrong button and instead of um, applying for settled status, you apply for pre-settled status. But a lot of them, well, like I said, 42% have been given pre-settled status and some of them haven't even been responded to. So where, what do they do now? What do the EU nationals do when they can only get pre-settled status and it means that they have to live precariously, they can't plan, they can't do anything because they don't know what's happening to them? And that is the situation at the moment. I mean, you get people, there was one elderly lady, um, she'd allowed her, she hadn't been traveling, so she allowed her passport to lapse. I forget how old they said she was, but I'll put it in the link. But apparently she has to go back to the Netherlands. If she, and she's in her 80s, I think, but she has to go back to the Netherlands if she wants to get a passport. As if she's going to do that. So she's been given pre-settled status. So she feels uncomfortable, you know, that she hasn't been given. And she's been in the UK for decades. And there are people who just cannot get the beyond pre-settled status, regardless of what they do. And it really is unfair. Um, there was another one. Um, who was the other lady? Oh, another uh, EU national wasn't granted settled status because he didn't have um, five years private health insurance. Was it private health? I don't know Apple ID 20 asterisk five's birth year yet, but I'll remember if you tell me. Can you imagine? I hate that. I really do. I really find that spooky when I'm talking on my video and that that bloody Cirrus or whatever it is assumes I'm talking to it. That's really, really spooky. Anyway, I'm going to try and ignore it. But if it goes off again, I'm going to have to redo the video. Um, so I'm talking a bit more quietly now because I just don't like the idea of that. Um, 
So these are some of the issues that the EU nationals face. There's an elderly lady who lived in the UK several years and needs to return to the country of origin. That's the one I just spoke about uh, because she's allowed her passport to lapse. Um, you need five years continuous private insurance. So where um, EU nationals haven't got that, they're being delegated to the um, pre-settled status. Um, there are some com they have to complete manual paper forms from the local registry and some of the local registry don't even know what this form is but this manual form needs to be completed and sent off to the home office so that's another obstacle um, if you've changed your address in the last five years that's another problem because apparently the system the online system only allows for one postal code so if you've changed your address within the last five years it doesn't give you the option to put in your last address before then you then get relegated to um, pre-settled status um, you have to and verifying your identity will cost you 14 pounds for the passport a lot of times you know which is another issue is that people who rent a lot of EU nationals rent and when they rent they're renting that they're, they're, uh, their landlords tend to be rogue landlords who um, have an all-inclusive rent which means council tax um, utilities are all included what does that mean for the tenant it means that they've got no proof of um, living anywhere they've got no bills no council tax notice so if you're an EU national and you're on one of those tenancies get off of it as soon as you can and try to get an authentic one where you pay your own council tax and you pay your own utilities on the front of it I can understand why people do that because they have one outlay at least you know you don't have to worry about your council tax you don't have to worry about your utility bills water you know electricity gas telephone but on the other hand you haven't got anything to prove where you are living and that can be an issue because having an address or a regular letter isn't going to be enough bank statements are okay so hopefully you've got a bank driving license that would help and you need three forms of id so probably bank statements and um yeah, your driving license if you drive and a bank card I don't even yeah I think bank cards are okay mobile phones aren't any good for evidence so um, yes so apparently you must applicants must have national insurance and evidence of their address so this Fred Sirius guy um, who runs that Michelin restaurant on first dates he submitted his all his paperwork his national insurance his address his passport and everything and they they said he wasn't accepted and um, and it would like I said it wasn't until after over 101,000 tweets he got permanent residence in 12 hours and they called him to tell him the news can you imagine that the home office calling an individual to tell them that they they got settled status I smell a rat anyway um, EU face problems of evidencing because um, that's another thing some of them came over as nannies some of them are relatives of EU nationals and they come over as nannies and they they're given some pocket money so they don't have national insurance and all that kind of stuff so they have problems evidencing their legal status um what else um yeah applications are meant to take between one and four days according to the website but it's taking a lot longer the settled status scheme has been running since march 2019 for eu nationals living in the uk to establish their legal right to live and work in the uk and guarantees were given to that the 3.2 million EU nationals would have no problem securing settled status but like I said 42% have been given pre-settled status despite living in the UK for decades but all EU citizens must apply for settled status if you are to legally reside in the UK 
but it doesn't look as though it's as easy as it seems. And the thing is, is that you have to make sure you complete your forms properly. If you're not English, if you don't understand, if you're unsure, please get somebody, an interpreter or someone to help you complete those online forms because they look easy enough, but they're not. And you make one mistake and you are relegated to pre-settled status. And that is probably why so many are on pre-settled status, because they might have done something wrong or might have misinterpreted something. Um, the newspaper article, and um, this was written by Amelia Gentleman, um, and I think it, this is taken from The Guardian. Campaigners have voiced concern that the Home Office is taking rapid steps to resolve the problems experienced by high profile European nationals applying for settled status who have gone public with their difficulties in an apparent attempt to manage negative publicity. 3rd of September, the television star and manager of Michelin starred restaurant, Fred Sibiu. <laughs> I just don't believe it. Let me just stop that. Oh, it stopped. What is going on this evening? Anyway, I'm glad it stopped. Um, Fred Syria, who has lived in the UK for the past 27 years, expressed frustration on Twitter at being asked to provide evidence of five years continuous residence, despite having submitted his passport details through the mobile phone application. Best known for the host of Channel 4's first date, Syria messaged the Home Office and the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, and his 110,000 Twitter followers, asking, is this a joke? I have lived here 27 years continuously. Within 12 hours, he had received a phone call from the Home Office, who told him a mistake had been made and emailed him confirmation that he had been awarded settled status. A mistake had been made. I would like to know what that mistake is. Seriously. That should not be allowed. Preferential treatment. That is discrim positive discrimination. Just because you're rich and famous, you get preferential treatment. But money talks. And how can they have... Um, somebody like Fred Sirius going around saying, you know, he's been waiting for so long before he got his settled status after all the news is saying, oh, you know, there's no problem. If you're an EU national, you get your settled status. And they, it looks as though they're deliberately delaying and, you know, being obstructive with giving people settled status. And it proves that they can do it. If they can do it for him in 12 hours, based on a few tweets, that shows you how powerful the media is, social media. He says, I didn't have to call them. They called me. I have no idea why my case was sorted so quickly. He's probably quite naive. Uh, it probably helped that I had 1,000 retweets. No, it helped because you are Fred Sirius, famous. TV star. But there will be many other people without a voice and I put or status anxiously waiting for help. He had been dismayed to receive a notification from the Home Office stating that the extra information was needed because our automated checks did not confirm your residence in the UK. I bet they say that to everyone. Our automated checks did not confirm your residence in the UK. And he was puzzled about why the checks had not picked up that he had been in, in uninterrupted employment with the same employer for more than a decade, paying taxes and national insurance. See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you show, what you evidence. They are looking for obstacles, but they're not expecting famous people to be in the mix. I wish there was more of them. I wish there was more of them. So if it's so uh, the regular John Joe gets pushed to the back of the queue. The experience of applying to remain in the country he considers home has made him feel like a second class citizen. Make Bond, co-founder of Three Million Charity, supported the estimated 3.2 EU nationals 
who need to apply if they wish to remain in the UK after Brexit was concerned that applicants who were unable to trigger explosions online were not getting such swift assistance from the Home Office. For very high profile case that gets a happy ending but there are hundreds and thousands of people who are neither getting the status they are entitled to nor help from the Home Office to put things right he said. Concerned that the Home Office prioritises cases that have attracted media attention arose last year when ministers were attempting to manage the emerging Windrush scandal although officials denied reports of a dedicated media case handling team. A Home Office spokesperson said it was encouraging people to call the hotline for applicants who needed help, but they call the hotline and they're left waiting for over 20 minutes and that hotline isn't free. So what are these people supposed to do? I think it's £2 a minute or something. We have contacted Mr Sirio about his application and he has now been granted settled status. Oh no, whoopee. Is that what we're supposed to say? Whoopee. I think they should be ashamed to say that. That they've granted him settled status within 12 hours. I would be embarrassed. I mean, they really don't have a clue. They think by calming one person who's rich and famous, they've done a good job. Forget about all the other people who don't have a voice. EU settlement scheme statistics confirmed that by the end of June, not a single person had been refused. EU citizens are our friends, family and neighbours and we want them to stay. This is what the Home Office is saying. If you want them to stay, why don't you give them their bloody settled status? I can't talk too loud because I don't want that bloody thing to go off my phone. I'm going to switch it off after this video anyway. However, applicants have reported 20 minute waits to get through on the helpline where a recorded message notes that staff are currently experiencing a high volume of calls. Can you imagine how frustrating that is? And it's the only way to get through. Syria, who has appeared on a number of television programmes, said hardly any of his 80 colleagues at the Galvan at the Galvin, at Windows Restaurant, at the Park Lane Hilton in London were British and added that his experience had made him determined to assist the large numbers of EU nationals there with their applications. I hope he does spearhead something because it's not right. You don't tell people that they can do something and then find ways to obstruct what you've told them that you can do and then make it look as though it's their fault. A lot of times it probably is there for, you know, there's no support. They're made to fill up these forms, these online forms that are not easy. They're very, very tricky. There's no one to walk you through it. There's no training on it. They've just come out with it. And then, you know, these people are put on pre-settled status. So assuming that you know, once the election goes through and everything is done, then they can boot them out. If they want to keep everything calm and hunky-dory while the election is going on. I hear Boris is, you know, opting for a general election. I don't know how true that is. But I mean, it's all politics. And, you know, it's at the poor people's expense, which is a sad thing. The poor people always suffer. The vulnerable always at the bottom of the pile. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope I told you something that you didn't know somewhere among all of that.